Are the New York Fed's GDP models now broken? So last week, we had a much worse than expected non-farm payrolls number come out. The expected number was an increase in 720,000 jobs, as you can see there on your screen. The actual number was only 235,000, probably part-time or underemployed fake jobs. But as you can see there on the left-hand side of your screen, the New York Fed has stopped reporting their GDP updated in real time, now casting report. Stephanie Pomboy of the Macro Mavens letter, the famous global macro newsletter, has screenshots showing that the New York Fed has stopped updating its GDP model forecast in real time. I'm wondering if the amount of inflation, the amount of stagflation is breaking these GDP models. Also, the U.S. Treasury now has less than $300 billion left in the U.S. Treasury general account. This is down from a trillion dollars or over a trillion dollars back when President Trump was still president. So the drawdown in amount of the U.S. Treasury general account has been enormous, over $800 billion in less than a year, which does not fit the official false narrative that the Fed is going to start significant tapering. So if there still was enormous amounts, hundreds of billions more or a trillion dollars more for the U.S. Treasury to draw down from, the Fed would not have to buy as many U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. I'll do another video in the next couple days showing that the amount of U.S. Treasuries the Fed is buying is still increasing massively. There's some really crazy statistics that have come out in the last week or so about how many U.S. Treasuries issued the Fed has had to buy. And these other central banks, like the Bank of England and others, are monetizing almost all of the debt. While MMT people and others and bond manager deflationistas claim that there's no inflation, the reality of the situation is that central banks all over the globe are basically monetizing all government debts, or a very large percentage, almost all, either all or almost all. The New York Fed has now suspended their GDP forecast models that they used to release publicly. Stephanie Pomboy from the Macro Mavens Global Macro Newsletter posted screenshots there. And this all started once the non-farm payrolls number, which came out last week, was much worse than expected. And the inflation numbers that have been coming out for weeks now are much higher than people expected. So we'll see what happens with the CPI or changing propaganda index, and if they're able to knock the inflation numbers back down. Meanwhile, here in reality, stagflation and shrinkflation and cost of goods sold in the supply chain, also shortages in the supply chain, are not getting any better. In fact, I speak with people working in supply chains and I ask for progress if prices are going to start coming back down for a lot of things in supply chains, if shortages are going to get fixed. And it seems like things are headed in the other direction, especially with wages starting to be forced higher by politicians, bureaucrats, and unions. Finally, if you like content like this, I want to help keep content like this free so it doesn't all end up behind a paywall, or you want far more in-depth content research, financial education, and analysis than I provide in these short little free videos, there are now over 180 articles, charts, and audio podcasts behind the paywall, including 29 new articles, in-depth ones out in the last 13 or so weeks on a lot of interesting topics about commodity industries, uranium, gold and silver miners, precious metal royalty and streaming companies, global macro, many companies and sectors, all for the cost of a Starbucks cup of coffee per month, only $5 a month. No one in this space charges less than me for premium content. If you don't like it, you can always cancel, although I think you're really going to like it. So if I could wrap up this short little video very quickly, stagflate tax lie is getting harder for the PhD economists, the Keynesians, to actually do stagflate tax lie. They're going to have to change the formulas for GDP. They're going to have to change the formulas for the consumer price index, or as I call it, CP lie, or the changing propaganda index. They're going to have to change these things even more to hide the amount of stagflation, to hide the amount of shrinkflation, because it is getting that bad. And this is before you start to actually factor in things like transportation costs going up. My friend, hedge fund manager, Tavi Costa, put out a comparison chart with the CP lie 
showing that the CPLI was only adding a 5% increase in tra transportation costs for things like Uber and Lyft, when the reality was Uber and Lyft costs were up way higher than that in the last 18 or so months. So the economic propaganda will get worse and worse. Meanwhile, Wall Street money managers and bond fund manager deflationistas that are gambling with other people's money and don't care if their bills for their grass-fed beef steaks double or triple in price because they're making so much money gambling with other people's money on their bond fund trades and then claiming that there's no inflation will pretend that there's no inflation or that it doesn't matter or that it's only transitory.